BestBookBits.com presents The Power of Less by Leo Bababato. With the countless distractions that come from every corner of a modern life, it's amazing how we were ever able to accomplish anything. The Power of Less demonstrates how to streamline your life by identifying the essential and eliminating the unnecessary, freeing you from everyday clutter and allowing you to focus on accomplishing the goals that can change your life for the better. The Power of Less will show you how to break any goal down into manageable tasks, Focus on only a few tasks at a time. Create new and productive habits. Hone your focus. Increase your efficiency. By setting limits for yourself and making the most of the resources you already have, you'll finally be able to work less, work smarter, and focus on living the life that you deserve. The written and audio summary can be found on our website, bestbookbits.com. So without further ado, I bring the book summary of The Power of Less. The Six Principles of Simple Productivity. Number one. Set limitations. Two, choose the essential. Three, simplify. Four, focus. Number five, create habits. And number six, start small. Chapter one, why less is powerful. Doing more things means you're likely to do a lot of unimportant things and you'll be overworked and stressed at the same time. Chapter three, choosing the essential and simplifying. Choosing the essential, a series of questions. Number one, what are your values? Number two, what are your goals? What do you want to achieve in life? How about over the next year? How about this month and today? Number three, what do you love? Think about what you love. What do you love to spend time with? What do you love doing? Number four, what is important to you? Five, what has the biggest impact? Six, what has the most long-term impact? Seven, needs versus wants. Eight, eliminate the non-essential. And nine, Continual editing process. Chapter 4, Simple Focus. Focusing on one task, single tasking. Number 1, multitasking is less efficient due to the need to switch gears from each new task and then switch back again. Number 2, multitasking is more complicated and thus leaves you more prone to stress and errors. And number 3, multitasking can be crazy making and in this already chaotic world, we need to rein in the terror and find a little oasis of sanity and calm. Here's how to single task instead. Number one, first thing in the morning, work on your most important task. Don't do anything else until this is done. Give yourself a short break, then on the next most important task. Number two, when you're working on a task in a time block, turn off all other distractions. Number three, if you feel the urge to check email or switch to another task, stop yourself. Breathe deeply. Refocus yourself, get back on the task at hand. Number four, if other things come in while you're working, put them in your inbox or take notes of them in a small notebook or on a text file on your computer. Get back to the task at hand. Number five, every now and then when you've completed the task at hand, process your notes and inbox, adding the tasks to your to-do list and refiguring your schedule if necessary. Process your email and other inboxes at regular and predetermined intervals. Number six, there are times when an interruption is so urgent that you cannot put it off. Make a note of where you are. And number seven, take deep breaths, stretch, and take breaks now and then. Enjoy life, go outside, and appreciate nature. Keep yourself sane. Chapter seven, simple goals and projects. The one goal system. Number one, choose a goal. Make a list of the things you'd like to accomplish over the next few years. Number two, break it down to a sub-goal. Focus on a smaller sub-goal that you can accomplish in the next month or two. Three, weekly goal. And four, daily action. The simple projects list. List all the projects you have going on in your life, including all your work projects, any personal and home projects, projects with civic organizations, and so on. Choose just the top three projects on your list. Don't choose three from each area of your life. Just choose three altogether. You don't move a project from the on-deck list to the simple projects list until you finish all three projects on your simple projects list. Not just one, but all three. Almost every project is held up as you wait for information, for other people to get back to you, for others to complete tasks, for vendors or clients to do something. So we multitask, but not on the task level. We multitask only on the project level. Break long-term projects into small projects that can be completed in a month or less. Chapter 10, Simple Email. Limit your time in email. Number of times per day. 
the best times. I found that if you check a twice a day, 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. are good times. Not first thing in the morning. Turn off email notifications. Reduce your incoming stream. Number one, junk. I recommend using Gmail as it has the best spam filters possible. I get zero spam in my inbox. Number two, notifications. I often get notifications from many online services I use, from Amazon to WordPress to PayPal and many more. As soon as I notice these types of notifications filling up my inbox, I create a filter or a rule if you use mail.app or Outlook that will automatically put those into a folder and mark them as read or trash them as appropriate. Number three, batch work. Number four, stupid joke emails. If you have friends or family who send you chain emails and joke emails and the like, email them and let them know that you are trying to lessen the huge amount of email you have to deal with. And while you appreciate them thinking of you, you'd rather not receive those kinds of messages. Number five, set expectations and publish policies. Creating a frequently asked questions page for more common questions and issues. Process to empty. Number one, temporary folder. If you have a very full inbox, hundreds of thousands of messages, you should create a temporary folder to be filled and get to them later, processing them perhaps 30 minutes at a time until you've taken care of them. Number two, have an external to-do system. Three, process quickly. Open each email and dispose of it immediately. Your choices, delete, archive for later references, reply quickly, and archive or delete the message. Put on your to-do list and archive or delete. Do the task immediately if it requires two minutes or less, then archive. Number four, be liberal with the delete key. Too often we feel the need to reply to every email, but we don't. Ask yourself, what's the worst thing that will happen if I delete this? If the answer isn't too bad, just delete it and move on. Number five, process to done. When you open your inbox, process it until you're done. Don't just look at an email and leave it sitting in your inbox. When you get an urge to go on the internet, let it pass. Every urge is like a wave. It builds up. Then it goes away. Another wave will come. But just ride that one out too. Every urge will pass if you just wait a few minutes. Chapter 13, Simple Commitments. Take inventory of your commitments. Work, side work, family, kids, civic. We may volunteer for different organizations or be a board member or officer. Religious, hobbies, home, online. We may be a regular on a forum or a mailing list or Google group. Then make a short list of your four to five most important commitments. Begin eliminating the non-essential. Start with something small. Call or email to send your regrets. Eliminate the commitment from your appointment and instead fill that time with something from your short list. Don't just use that time to watch TV. Repeat this process with the other non-essential commitments one at a time until you're done. Strive to eliminate all non-essential commitments from your list. Each time you cut a commitment, it may give you a feeling of guilt because others want you to keep that commitment. But it's also a huge relief not having to keep that commitment each day or week or month. It frees up a lot of time, and while others may be disappointed, you have to keep what's important to you in mind, not what's important to everyone else. If we committed to what everyone else wanted all the time, we would never have any time left for ourselves. Learn to say no. Learn to say no. Your list of commitments didn't become overloaded by itself. Those commitments were added to your life one by one because you accepted them. Someone made a request and you said yes, one commitment at a time. If you have difficulty saying no to request, here are some tips. Number one, first be aware. Learn to recognize requests for what they are, demands on your time. Number two, consider your shortlist. Is this request in line with the four to five priorities you wrote out in the shortlist? Number three, be honest. Tell the person that you're trying to cut back on your commitments because you've been overloaded. Number four, be firm. Say, I just can't right now. And make it clear that you're not open to negotiation or persuasion. Number five, I wish I could. Often I could honestly tell the person, I really wish I could. It sounds great, but I just don't have the time right now. And number six, don't be sorry. Nothing in the world has failed because one person said no to a request. If the need was great enough, another person filled it. Chapter 16, slow down. Slow attention. The projects we focus on are the projects that get completed. 
With the hectic pace of our lives, our attention is pulled in a million different directions all the time. Slow working. If you can focus on the important tasks and projects and keep your focus on those tasks, you will accomplish important things. In contrast, someone can work frantically for 12 hours a day, doing as many tasks as possible, and yet not accomplish anything important. Slow eating. Take smaller bites. You chew each bite slower and longer, and you enjoy your meal longer. Good reasons you should consider the simple act. Lose weight, enjoy your food, better digestion, less stress, rebel against fast food and fast life. Slow driving. Driving is a much more calm, serene experience, and I enjoy it much more. Driving for me has become a time of contemplation. Here are five reasons to drive slower. Number one, save gas. Number two, save lives. Number three, save time. Start out a few minutes early and you'll arrive at the same time as someone who drove faster but started later. And you'll arrive much happier than that person to boot. And number four, save your sanity. Huge drop in my stress level. And number five, simplify your life. Reduce many other complications, the headache of accidents or speeding tickets. For one, going to the gas station too often for another, it can also improve the hectic pace of life. Here are some of the slow driving tips that have worked for me. Play relaxing music, ignore other drivers, leave early, brainstorm, keep to the right, and enjoy the drive. And that's a wrap on the book summary of The Power of Less. Check out our YouTube channel with over 450 video book summaries uploaded previously and more to come. Hit the subscribe, like the button, and comment on what you think. Check out our website, bestbookbits.com, where you'll find the written version in PDF to download and read offline in video categories from biographies, business and marketing, habits, health, leadership, money, personal development, psychology, philosophy, real estate, relationship, sales, spirituality, success, and time management. If you're into the audio version, check out mixcloud.com forward slash best book bits, where you'll find over 450 audio book summaries, podcast to listen to at your pleasure. And last, follow us on Instagram at best book bits for daily motivational quotes and book summaries. Hope you got something from this summary. Go out there and enjoy the power of less. Take care. Bye-bye now.